In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, I'm going to show you how to build a pitfall trap. I'll show you some variations on this trap, and then I'll show you the insect gold I was able to find using this method. So the first thing I want to do in this episode is I want to talk to you about how we actually set up a pitfall trap. So it's really not that hard to do this. Anybody can do this. All you really need is a couple cups or you can use uh, old yogurt containers or sour cream containers, whatever you've got. What you're going to do first is you're going to dig a hole. And what I like to do is I'll put a cup in the hole first and then I put another cup into that, which I like to call the double cup method. And the nice thing about this is that when you pull out a cup to see what's inside of it, um, the dirt around it is not going to collapse because there's another cup just sitting in the ground waiting to hold that in and then you can just put your cup right back into the other cup and it's just a little bit easier to reset up your traps each time. So when you start digging up ground or digging to put uh, traps out, um, like I said in my rotting logs episode, you want to uh, avoid ants. So if you start digging into ants, pick a different area because ants will either um, get into your cup and uh, feed on insects that get in there or they might just kill things before they even get in. So once you get your cups in the ground, you want to flatten the ground near the cup so that it's as level with the surface of the ground as possible. That way then insects are more likely to walk into it and not really have to be climbing up. But if you look here, this is kind of how it works. I kind of coaxed this beetle and it moved towards the trap and it just fell in. And because it's plastic, the surface is usually not that easy to climb up. So with pitfall traps, there's some different variations you can use depending on whether you want to collect live insects or dead insects. If you want to get dead insects, you can put soap and water into a cup and this prevents insects from floating on the top. As you can see, these beetles here kind of were floating on the top. That um, kind of breaks the surface tension and then they just sink to the bottom and the insects will just die in there. If you want to get live insects, which is my preference, then you can just do a basic trap like this one. Um, you just have it there and insects will walk in and they'll be stuck in there. You can also do baited traps like you can use fruits and uh, in the past I've done traps with rotting meat and that's a great way to attract burying beetles which are really cool beetles. Some of the things you can add to your traps if you want to prevent flyers from getting out or flying insects you can add some sticks like this and these sticks over this cup probably aren't going to stop things like flies and stuff like that but they will stop uh, beetles and things that are not super good flyers because they'll just hit into the sticks and then fall straight back down so that is an option you can also put like a wood block like this tilting it so they kind of have a little um, area to get in and that can prevent flyers and it also can kind of be an area that's dark which a lot of insects will want to go into dark areas because they feel like they can hide in there so one variation you can do if you want to prevent water from getting into the traps, which is very important for live traps, is putting holes into the cups. And this is great in case if it rains or if your mom turns on the sprinklers and doesn't tell you that she's doing that when you put traps in her garden. Um, that is a good thing to have because um, the cups will fill up with water and that will kill the insects. Now let's talk about how you check the trap. Checking a trap is not really that hard. You should at least wait a day in between checking the traps just so you give a chance for insects to go in. And insects will even go in during the night. And the thing that I noticed about insects actually getting into your trap is the hotter the day, the more likely insects will go in. So if the day before was a cool day, you can still go check it. But if it's a hot day, you definitely want to go check it the next day because there's a lot more insect activity. But I would say at the least, if you're going to be putting out traps, you should check them two to three times per week at the least, just to make sure you're getting everything and insects aren't eating each other and stuff like that. Let's talk a little bit about the problems that will happen with pitfall traps, and this can also be applied to some other traps too. But one problem is varmints like raccoons or possums or dogs or just other animals like that can get into your traps. You're much more likely to have that happen if you've got a bait in there because they're probably interested in the bait especially if it's like some rotting meat or something so to kind of deal with that you can 
either build a cage over it, which, I mean, that's what a professional person would do that's doing tests and they want to make sure that an animal is not going to get into it. But I like to just kind of put a log over it and or a piece of wood and then a brick to kind of hold it on there to keep those animals out. And you can also just pick an area where you don't think dogs or other animals are going to go. Another problem with pitfall traps is that they're not very effective for flying insects, which if you know anything about insects, you know that almost all insects are flying. So in other words, pitfall traps are great for insects that are not going to be flying around, but insects that are moving on the ground. So now we get to go to the more fun part and look at all the different things I've been finding in my pitfall traps. So over the past three or four weeks, I've had these traps out and I've been trying some different techniques to see what would attract them and bring them in. And after I show you all the different things I've found, I will share with you what I think is the best way to trap using some of the different things I discussed before. So first off, let's look here. Uh, the first time I put out these traps, this was literally like one or two days after I put the traps out, I found tons of ground beetles. I was not expecting to find this many ground beetles. And so these were in our garden at our house. And these are awesome. This is great to see these. And I'm glad that I caught these in a live trap because these will hunt snails and slugs and other insects on the ground. And they are just generalist predators, which means they will feed on just about anything. So these are great things and allies to have in your garden. And that's a good sign. So these traps can actually give you an idea of what is in your garden. So I'm glad we've got these in there. My mom was wondering what they were, and I said, yes, these are good. This is great for your garden. You want to have these things there, so this is a good sign. So whenever I caught these, I would always put them back in the garden in a different section because I didn't want them coming back in the trap. So speaking of these ground beetles, one of the problems I was talking about earlier is that water will kill off these insects if you're not doing a live trap, and so you can kill off actually good insects. So that's why I prefer just doing these live traps because I don't want to kill off these guys. I accidentally did kill off quite a few because I forgot to check my traps. My mom had watered the garden and I came back probably three or four days later because I was doing other things and didn't check them. And then there were all these dead beetles in there, which is kind of sad and made me feel bad because, you know, I killed a whole bunch of natural enemies that could have been killing grasshoppers or other insects in the garden that are possibly feeding on our vegetables. So you should always check your traps often. So one of the other things I was finding a lot of are different spiders, and I am not a spider expert, but this spider here is a male, and the reason I know that is because it has those palps on the front of its legs, and those are actually used for mating. Um, so I thought that was cool to find that one. And spiders are also a good sign for the garden, you know, the, having these guys around or helping you out in your garden or whatever area to kill off harmful insects. Another uh, testament to how good I did at checking my traps is this spider here. He had enough time to build a spider's web, so you want to keep checking those often, um, or else, you know, other insects are going to get caught in the web, and if you want to add them to your collection, and they've already had all their juices sucked out of them and been attacked by a spider, you're probably not going to be able to use them, and they probably aren't going to be alive either. Another spider here is this one, and... This one actually was kind of cool. At first I looked at it and I thought, oh, it's got a very large abdomen back there. It's just really big. But actually underneath behind its abdomen is an egg sac. And spiders like this will carry their egg sacs around and protect them. And eventually the spiders will hatch and they'll climb around on the body of the, usually the mother is the one who carries it around and uh, she carries the babies around with her until they're ready to go off on their own. I have been finding a lot of daddy long legs here in the garden, and so those are actually something good to have in the garden. Um, they're also called harvestmen, and uh, they're scavengers. They clean stuff up in the garden, and if you didn't already know this, they're not true spiders. They're arachnids, but they're not spiders. I was also able to find an earwig had climbed in, and... They're super common, so I'm not going to say much else about earwigs. I also found a millipede, um, and these guys are also scavengers and common as well. So they're just crawling around your garden eating dead old leaves and whatever else they can find uh, that they can consume. One interesting thing I found in my actual soap trap 
is an earthworm. And so, as you saw earlier, I was setting my traps level with the ground. And so, I just thought it was interesting that an earthworm came into there. So, I just imagine in the middle of the night, an earthworm poking its head out of the ground and just moving into the cup or something. So, it goes to show you that, well, maybe it was raining or something and it had to travel out outside of the earth. But it's just not very often you get to see earthworms. Uh, moving around outside of the ground unless you've actually like dug them up. So I also was able to find a few flies. Um, I set up some traps with some peaches for bait and that attracted uh, some fruit flies and some other flies. And I was able to get a fly in the soapy water trap. Um, this bait trap also attracted some fungus. And if you look at this other bait trap I had, um, I pulled out this big chunk of peach and it started moving and I was like, what the heck? Um, and it was actually just a ground beetle moving around in the peach uh, underneath some flaps. So a couple days ago, I checked my traps again and I've been seeing all the same things, all the things I just talked about right now. But yesterday I was able to find a row of beetle, which are these long beetles that almost look like earwigs. And they're really cool because they have really tiny wings that are folded up. Um, you see just right up there near their head, they have just this small little, these small little wings and their, their, uh, back of their abdomen is uncovered. And these are very similar to ground beetles, but they're much better flyers. Here is, uh, the other row of beetle that I found. And this one is just a really tiny one. I've just got it in my hand here from another trap. Just wanted to show it to you real quick. To wrap up this episode, I want to talk to you about what I think is the best way to actually do a live pitfall trap. So this is just coming from my experience, and I've only showed you a few variations. But what I think is the best way is to get a cottage cheese container or a sour cream container. Make sure you've got lots of them and also get some lids and do the double cup method. Have some holes in them so that the water will drain out of them. So the nice thing about these bigger cups is you'll get more insects into them. There's like a larger area for insects to cross paths with the trap. And you can also, once you catch something, put the lid on it and then stick it in the freezer. Or you can show it off to your friends, but you've already got them in a container. So they're ready to go for whatever your next step is for you. So thanks for watching this episode if you enjoyed it. Like, uh, subscribe, and leave me a comment below of what type of insect collecting technique you'd like me to show off to you or any questions you have. And I'll keep on the lookout for more insects so you can join us next time on the Insect Hunter for all things insects.